Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about purine, biosynthesis, degradation, and salvage pathways. So I'm gonna just bring you through all of the different stages of it, and we're gonna have a little talk about some of the clinical correlates as well that are associated with each part. Okay, so we start with ribose 5-phosphate. Let me get a little closer here. So ribose 5-phosphate. which is actually taken from the pentose phosphate pathway. Ribose 5-phosphate is gonna to go to a compound called PRPP through the use of an enzyme called PRPP synthetase. Now I'm emphasizing the the in synthetase because anytime you have a synthetase as opposed to a synthase, you're gonna be utilizing ATP. So I'm gonna show that here. Now going back to PRPP, PRPP is an extremely important a compound that you're going to learn has um, three major roles. The first of which is, of course, purine biosynthesis, purine and pyrimidine biosynthesis. Um, the second of which is both the purine and the pyrimidine salvage pathways. And the third of which is the creation of NAD from tryptophan. Okay, so moving on. So from PRPP, we're going to go to a compound called 5-phosphoribosyl-1-amine. Um, and this utilizes an enzyme called glutamine phosphoribosyl transferase. And it's, it's called this because it descri is describing exactly what it's doing, right? So we're going to take glutamine. Glutamine, we're going to strip the amine group off of glutamine, and we're going to plug it on the PRPP. And in addition to that, we're going to take water, and we're going to hydro hydrolyze it. So we're going to take off two phosphate groups with it. So we've stripped the phosphate groups from PRPP, and additionally added an amine group. So glutamine, phosphoribosyl, amidotransferase. We're an amidotransferase because we're transferring an amine group. Okay, to get 5-phosphoribosyl-1-amine. From 5-phosphoribosyl-1-amine, we're actually going to have a series of steps that you really don't need to know any details about because they don't have very many clinical, or re they really don't have any clinical correlation. Um, so you don't have to know those. What you do have to know is that eventually we're going to get down here to IMP and... Involved in two of these steps, we need something called N10 formal FH4. N10 formal tetrahydrofolate. N10 formal tetrahydrofolate, the synthesis of this compound, is going to be inhibited by a drug called methotrexate. And anytime we are inhibiting the synthesis of purines or pyrimidines, we are inhibiting the synthesis of DNA, right? So methotrexate is going to make a good chemotherapy agent. Now from IMP, we are going to have two separate routes. One is going to be for the creation of AMP, ADP, and ATP, and the other one, we're going to go to GM, GMP, GDP, GTP. Before we can get there, we have to go to two compounds. One is XMP, and the other is adenyl succinate. And then from there, we can go to our AMP, ADP, and ATP. And from here, we can go to our GMP, GDP, GTP. And one note, two important enzymes that you need to know up here is um, going from IMP to adenyl succinate, and the enzyme that does that is adenyl succinate synthetase. Synthetase. So just as I told you before, anytime we have a synthetase, we're going to be utilizing ATP, right? So I'm going to demonstrate that here. And then over here is IMP dehydrogenase. Now, anytime I'm telling you guys you need to know an enzyme, 
Um, usually the reason why is because they're allosterically regulated. So we're going to go back through all the enzymes that we've labeled, and I'm going to show you how they are allosterically regulated. So starting with PRP, P synthetase, um, this one is negatively regulated by some of our products. So PRPP synthetase is going to be negatively regulated by ADP and GDP. So I'm going to demonstrate that up here. So ADP and also GDP. It's really common for products to go back and allosterically inhibit uh, some of the enzymes. Um, glutamine phosphoribosyl transferase is going to be similar, similar, but it's going to be inhibited by AMP, ADP, and ATP, and also GMP, GDP, and GTP. Now, additionally, these enzymes down here are going to be inhibited by um, AMP and GMP, respectively. The only other allosteric regulation that we haven't talked about is the positive allosteric regulation of PRPP to glutamine phosphoribosyl transferase. So PRPP will come down and actually positively regulate phosphoribosyl transferase. So in addition to having all of these roles of PRPP, we also are going to have the role of the allosteric activation there. Okay, so this having problems here. This is going to be our biosynthesis. Now, next, moving on to our degradation, um, it's going to come from our monophosphates. So we're going to start with AMP. AMP is going to go to inosine. Inosine is going to go to IMP. So now we've gotten back to what we started with, right? Then it's going to go to something called hypoxanthine. And hypoxanthine is going to go to xanthine. Over here, we're going to have GMP going to guanosine. Then to guanine. And then back down to hypoxanthine. From xanthine, we're going to go to uric acid. And then uric acid can be excreted through the urine. And two, or actually just one important enzyme, but that's located in two different places, is called xanthine oxidase. And we're going to put XO for short down here. Now, gout, as a clinical correlate, happens when we have a buildup of uric acid. So, a treatment for gout is inhibiting these enzymes with a drug called allopurinol. And when we inhibit these enzymes, um, we disallow a buildup of uric acid and we can help treat gout. Okay, so that is going to be our degradation pathways. Now moving on to salvage. So we have a really important enzyme called HGPRT. Um, I always look at the enzyme first because I think it helps you remember how the savage pathway works. But basically, the H and the G stand for hypoxanthine and guanine. So it helps you remember which um, compounds they're using to do the salvage. Um, it also uses PRPP. So that's where the phosphoribosyl transferase is coming in. So we're going to have PRPP going back, and our goal here is to get all the way back up to IMP. And just the same on the other side, so PRPP going to IMP. And it does this by utilizing hypoxanthine and utilizing guanine and then kicking out our two pyrophosphates. Now, a really important clinical correlate is the deficiency of HGPRT, which will lead to a condition known as Lesch Nyan disease. And what happens with this disease 
is that we'll actually end up with a bunch of PRPP. And this happens, right, because when we inhibit this enzyme, we're disallowing salvage to occur. Therefore, we're going to have a lot of PRPP, right? And not only that, um, but we're also not salvaging. So we have a lot more going to degradation. But the important part here is that, yes, we have a lot of, uh, more going to degradation, but we also have a buildup of PRPP. And if you remember, I told you that PRPP positively is a positive allosteric activator for phosphoglutamine phosphoribosyl transferase. And so whenever we have a bunch of PRPP, we're not only um, you know, disallowing this degradation, but we're also um, causing this pathway to go into overdrive. So now we have all this biosynthesis, and when we have a lot of biosynthesis, then we're going to have a lot of degradation. And now we have this huge buildup of uric acid. Anytime we have a lot of uric acid, we're going to have gout. So one symptom of Lejeunein disease is this crippling gouty arthritis. Okay, another one is mental retardation. And they're also prone to self-mutilation. And, and that kind of goes along with the mental retardation. Okay. Uh, the last thing that we haven't quite talked about, and I'm going to erase this just so we have a little bit more room, but is the other enzyme that does salvage. So we have HGPRT, but we also have APRT, which is going to take uh, adenine to AMP. So very similar, but instead we're going AMP from PRPP and adenine. Adenine is going to go in, our phosphate groups are going to get kicked out, and we're going to be left with AMP. So I believe that concludes um, this video about purine biosynthesis, salvage, and degradation pathways. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for watching.